verse I'm going to read is a verse which most people don't like to read, but it's in the Bible, and it's very important. And that is Hebrews 12, verse 11, and it says, Now no chastening for the present seemeth joyous. See, nobody really wants to read about chastening, but it's really a very important part of the work of God in our life. Now no chastening for the present seemeth to be joyous, but grievous. Do you agree with that? Grievous. Nevertheless, afterwards it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are exercised by it. The word chastening, I'm going to read to you directly from Sparkling Gems, is an old Greek word for the education or instruction of a child. It comes from the word pice, which is the Greek word for a boy. However, as time passed, the word paideia, which is the word chastening in this verse, came to describe the education of all children, and by the time of Plato, the word paideia included not only the education of children, but also of adults. So this word chastening can refer to adults or to children. The concepts of discipline and regimen were so intrinsically interwoven in this word that in Luke 23, 16 and verse 22, the verb form of this word is translated to chasten, and it even describes Jesus being whipped, scourged, or punished. So this is a very strong word when the Bible talks about chastening. And when the Bible talks about chastening in this verse, it refers to disciplinary action by the Lord. Disciplinary action by the Lord when the Lord loves us so much that He trains us and He chastens us. The chastening is not just a form of punishment, but the, intent, the intention is to educate, to instruct, so that we don't repeat the same offense time and again. And the Bible says that when it happens, it's grievous. And the word grievous is the word lupe. The word lupe means pain, distress, trouble, grief, or sorrow. Though the discipline is good for us and provides us with a means to change, the flesh doesn't like it and the scream, flesh screams out, this is a painful experience. And the Bible says that this discipline will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness in them that are exercised by it. The word exercise is the Greek word gumnadzo, which is the old Greek word which means to physically work out. It's where we get the word for a gymnasium, the Greek word gym, gumnadzo. If you go to the gym, you work out. And here, the writer of Hebrews is telling us that when God begins to discipline us, chasten us, and thereby educate us, instruct us, you know, I wish that we were spiritual enough to be changed without pain, but usually we don't change until we hurt. And when the Lord begins to correct us and bring discipline into our life, disciplinary action, our flesh does not like it. But if we will allow that disciplinary action to gumnadzo, exercise us, work us over and work us out, not resist it, but surrender to it, it will yield the peaceable fruit of righteousness in our life. I can testify the chastening is very difficult, but if you'll surrender to it, the chastening of the Lord will bring the peaceable fruit of righteousness into your life.